There is a lot that could be said, in fact, a lot that should be said about the death of Christ. The question is not finding something to say, but on trying to focus on only one thing to say. It is such a profound spiritual reality, so much ink has been spilt just on this one topic, that one could go on for an entire lifetime just trying to make sense of this one article of the faith. And that makes sense. The purpose of human life is union with God. Sin cuts off the possibility of such a union, but the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus makes it possible. It is literally something that touches on every one of the most fundamental elements of human existence. It is an all-embracing reality. But today, I will focus on one element of the theological implications of the passion and death of Jesus, namely those elements explored and analyzed by the 20th century Swiss Catholic priest and theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar. Von Balthasar was born in 1905 in Lucerne, in central Switzerland. Von Balthasar was the eldest of three children born to a devout Catholic family. His father was an architect who specialized in church buildings, and his mother was deeply involved in the church. Von Balthasar's sister became a Franciscan nun, and his brother became a member of the Swiss Guard. Von Balthasar began to attend the University of Zurich, spending brief periods studying at the University of Berlin and the University of Vienna, where his main area of expertise was theology and literature. In fact, these two interests of his, his interest in the arts and literature and his interest in theology, fed into one another, but that could be a whole other presentation. In 1928, at the age of 23, von Balthasar graduated with his doctorate. In the year later, in 1929, he had a profound spiritual experience that led him to enter into the seminary. Interested in the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who founded the Jesuit order, von Balthasar entered into a seminary run by the Jesuits, and in 1936, at the age of 31, was ordained a priest for the Jesuit order. After spending a brief period of time working for a magazine run by the Jesuits that specialized in the intersection of religion and culture, von Balthasar eventually took a job as a chaplain at the University of Basel in Switzerland. During this time, he also began to write studies of famous works in Christian theology, translate pieces of classical literature into German and organized several academic conferences with famous theologians at that time. Von Balthasar also worked with Adrian von Speyer, a local nurse and convert to Catholicism who had written many works on mystical theology and spirituality, to form in 1945 the Community of St. John an organization made up mostly of lay people and priests who live by a particular rule that lays out the principles of prayer and contemplative life that members of the community adhere to. It's not quite a monastic order because you don't take religious vows, but it's an organization meant for mutual support for growth in the contemplative life. Although von Balthasar left the Jesuit order in 1950, he continued to serve as a priest and theologian, publishing books, giving lectures, and writing shorter, devotional pieces. Von Balthasar unfortunately died in 1988 at the age of 83. He was interestingly raised to the status of a cardinal towards the end of his life, ironically while he was on his deathbed by Pope St. John Paul II, who himself was a great admirer of von Balthasar's work. Von Balthasar was also a good friend of Joseph Ratzinger, later Pope Benedict XVI, and the two of them worked together to found the academic journal Communio in 1972. Now, before we go any further, I think we need to deal with the elephant in the room. Von Balthasar was considered a somewhat controversial figure, even in his own time. He was a member of a school of thought known as the Nouvelle Theologie, which is French for the New Theology which refers to a group of theologians and intellectuals in the Catholic Church 
who specialized primarily in biblical theology, early church history, and patristics, who attempted to rediscover the roots of Christian theology and spirituality and adapt it to the intellectual changes of the modern period. Supporters of this school of thought believed that medieval and early modern scholasticism, while fundamentally orthodox, represented a later development in church teaching, and yet in spite of this, dominated most of the intellectual circles in the church. What we need to do is transcend traditional scholastic modes of thought and recapture the spirit of biblical and patristic thought. Yet scholasticism was so influential in the church at that time that most major doctrines of the church were expressed, even in official church documents, in scholastic terms. Further, in the late 19th century, Pope Leo XIII declared that the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the most influential of the medieval scholastics, be at the center of all Catholic seminary training and university theology programs thus challenging the scholastic status quo or the Thomistic status quo of 20th century Catholicism was seen as making you subject to suspicion. Further, von Balthasar was, and even to this day is, often criticized for his endorsement of soft universalism. And this actually is the source of much debate, at least within the past few years, between several popular online Catholic commentators such as Bishop Robert Barron, an admirer of von Balthasar's work, and the traditionalist Catholic commentator Michael Voris. In this video, I'm not really going to be dealing with any of these controversial parts of von Balthasar's thought, but rather I'm going to be focused in the themes found in one of von Balthasar's most famous texts concerning soteriology. Titled Mysterium Pascale, Latin for The Mystery of Easter, this text begins by asserting that what most theologians have said concerning the relationship between the death and resurrection of Jesus and Christology more generally is, at best, theologically problematic. He notes, for example, the view of the medieval theologian John Duns Scotus, who asserted that the entire point of God's plan of salvation is to unite creation to himself, and the core of how this happens is when God unites divine nature to human nature in the Incarnation. The Incarnation thus would have happened regardless of whether or not humanity fell into sin. This, for von Balthasar, thus makes the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the central event of history, accidental to God's larger plan. Yet, some theologians put forward the opposite view, that the entire reason why Jesus became incarnate in the first place was to make possible his death and resurrection, which in turn was only necessary because mankind fell into sin. But this view is also problematic. For von Balthasar, one way in which God glorifies himself is through his creation. Yet God would have glorified himself through his creation regardless of whether or not humanity fell into sin. Yet one way in which God glorifies himself through his creation is in redeeming his creation from sin. But by stating that the incarnation, death, and resurrection, which does serve to glorify God, is necessary only because humanity fell into sin, ends up making God's glory, at least in part, dependent on human sin which, of course, spiritually speaking, is an absurdity. Yet, the major point that von Balthasar wants to point our attention towards is that all of these debates surrounding the relationship between the passion and death of Christ on the one hand and Christology on the other miss the big picture. When one attempts to contextualize the Christian view on salvation within the traditional Christological views of the Church, one quickly begins to realize that the key element driving the Christian view is ultimately, at base, a paradox. Looking at the facts of salvation history, one can conclude that it is in emptying himself through the incarnation, death, and resurrection that God expresses his glory. This is the paradox at the heart of the Christian faith. In his self-emptying, Jesus is glorified. 
The reason for this is because one manner in which God is glorified is through his creation. And given the reality of sin and death, God is glorified in redeeming his creation. God specifically chose to save us by becoming human and dying on the cross. The reason for this is because, von Balthasar states, sin corrupts human nature and distorts the image of God within us. Quote, the shadowed image can only be restored by God, by the second Adam who is from heaven. Unquote. Von Balthasar writes, The reason why God saved us by becoming human and dying is explained by von Balthasar when he writes, God wishes, quote, to experience the human condition from within, so as to redirect it from the inside, and thus save it, unquote. Which he does by placing himself at, quote, that point where sinful mortal man finds himself at wit's end. And this must be the place where man has lost himself in death, without for all of that finding God. This is the place where he has fallen into the abyss of grief, indigence, darkness, into the pit from which he cannot escape by his own power." Unquote. In order to conquer the forces of sin and death, Christ places himself in the midst of sin and death. In order to overcome our separation from him, Christ, though by nature the Son of God, consubstantial with the Father, allows himself to experience God forsakenness. He directly confronts and takes upon himself that which lies at the root of our alienation, and therefore God, quote, binds together the fractured extremities of the idea of man, unquote. Because human nature is restored, elevated out of its sin by the death and resurrection of Christ, von Balthasar can state that this event now becomes the center point through which the entirety of the human experience can be interpreted. Quote, the cross, as Matthew chapter 24 verse 30 says, or better, the crucified one, is therefore the term to which all human existence, whether personal or social, tends. It is a term which is final judgment and redemption as through fire. Cross reference 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 15. Unquote. Yet, what is most important for von Balthasar is the fact that the, quote, midpoint of this restorative action is necessarily the place of the original rupture, death, Hades, lostness from God, unquote. The point of our separation from God is also the point where our salvation is won for us. This is what von Balthasar sees as being the core of St. Paul's words in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. The notion of being in the form of God is interpreted by von Balthasar in terms of Jesus being in the form of glory, that is, directly participating in or reflecting the glory of the Father. Thus, the form of God is not another term for Jesus' divinity, and the human likeness or the form of a slave is not another term for Christ's human nature. Rather, these terms refer primarily to states of being. Christ emptied himself of his glory in order to redeem us. This is a point which von Balthasar believes was often minimized in a lot of the patristic debates surrounding Christology and the Trinity, which tended to revolve around questions like how can God, in the person of Jesus, become human without ceasing to be God? Or how can Jesus, if he is also God and therefore immortal, die? It's not that the church fathers are wrong, rather it's a matter of them getting so caught up in the minutia that they missed the forest for the trees. Yet even more problematic are certain strains of thought in contemporary philosophy and theology, ranging from New Age thoughts to German idealists to liberal Christianity, who often see the cross as a symbol for some broader historical, meta-ethical, or spiritual truth, and therefore use the cross as a symbolic tool to build up some larger philosophy of history or metaphysics. Such thinkers, in their attempts to rationalize the cross, often either treat as unimportant or even outright reject the historicity of the cross. 
and thereby do not see it as God literally entering into the fallen, created state in order to draw us out of our brokenness. Von Balthasar thus states that the best way to counteract this trend is by returning to the way of speaking of the passion, death, and resurrection put forward by scripture, which places a strong emphasis on the eschatological implications of the death and resurrection of Jesus and its relation to what Christ said about himself as the Messiah. Now at the time of recording this video, it's Holy Saturday, the one full day in which Jesus lied in the tomb. Think about it. The author of life experienced death. The all-good God allowed himself to be subjected to unjust persecution. Yet I think the main thing that von Balthasar's thought calls us to do, the main point that he's trying to get us to look at, is that we shouldn't try to reason away this paradox, but we should delve deeper and deeper into it. And this is something which we see in scripture, for example, in the words of St. Paul. When talking about God's plan of salvation, he says, quote, God's weakness is stronger than human strength, unquote. It is in weakness that he shows forth his power, his power over sin and death, and therefore wins salvation for us.